the right-hander from Montreal, Steve Rogers, is warming it up. And his catcher tonight is Jeffy Dyer. At first base, Rusty Scott. Rodney Scott is playing second. The shortstop, Chris Fryer. Larry Parrish is playing third. Their outfield left to right is Warren Cromarty, Andre Dawson, and Ellis Valentine. Pirate coaches are in place. Now Montag at first, Joe Lynette at third. And the leadoff batter for the Bucks will be Omar Moreno, the center fielder. Montreal flipping the ball around in the infield, and Moreno getting ready to move away from that on-deck circle. The on-deck hitter is Foley. Down in the hole is Dave Parker. And the final try goes up there. Beat him, Bucks. with an RBI in this series. And he's batting 280 for the year with eight homers and 67 runs batted in. Rogers' first pitch. Swung on, bounce foul down the right side, skipped up into the lower boxes, and it's strike one. Omar's amigos are out in the left center field for Villa. Here's the pitch. Swinging in a line drive, right center, base hit.
right. The outfield's going to come up a little bit. They play him a little shallower here with a runner in third. Right fielder plays him a little toward the line, giving Foley a big hole in right center. The center fielder stayed at just a bit to left center, and the left fielder's playing him straight away. Infield up all the way. A bouncer up the middle. Back another little 
snap. Now he's up on the hill and ready. Still there with a strike, one count. Parker leads at second. Here's the pitch. Down low. One ball, one strike. the one to nothing pirate lead in the first inning and with Milner up there the Buck Power Gang is here hoping maybe Milner can play some long ball and give our starter Keaton some real working room here's the pitch bouncer first base job will come to the bag himself Milner is out to throw the Bucks and that'll do it in the opening inning Pirates get on the board with one run and three straight hits double play put the damper on a big inning no errors and one man left so we have played an inning Exciting battle in Buck Baseball for you, and we hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Milo Hamilton and Lanny Pateri with the story. And after one inning, it's Pittsburgh one, Montreal nothing. Keaton with a one to nothing lead in the second inning. We'll be looking at Valentine, Perry, and Fire in an afternoon game at Chicago. New York Mets beat the Cubs for the score of eight to three. The Cubs will be here for the weekend, Friday night. Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, but before they invade, we've got a make-up game tomorrow, and what a bargain for you. It's a buck day. All tickets reduced a dollar and a half. Supposed to be a beautiful afternoon. Come out and enjoy afternoon baseball this late in the season during the week. Those of you who aren't able to make it for some of the night games because of a work schedule, here's your opportunity to back your buck tomorrow afternoon on buck afternoon. Valentine, 3 for 12 in the series with two RBIs. Leading it off in the second against Keaton. He's batting 281. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul. Valentine with 21 homers and 82 runs batted in. Perry, the on deck hitter. Valentine stepping out a moment. Getting back up in there. And the 0-1 from Buster. Fouled it up here to the right to the top of the screen. But keeps it out on top of the count. No balls. Two strikes. Our old buddy Justin Horan taking so much heat because there aren't any banners downtown. He ought to get all the banners here at the park and take them over to the Golden Triangle. Wouldn't that be a nice decoration? And they deserve it, wouldn't they? They bring those things here every night. Add so much to the park. Here's the 0-2 pick. Smash to deep short. Backhand. Goal. It'll be. Sergio. Valentine runs well for a big guy. Well, he knew he had to unload in a hurry. Threw it into the dirt. That little short hop, and Sergio came right up with it. Good defense on both ends. Here's Larry Perry with an eight-game hitting streak. Four for 11 in the series. There is a high pop right side. Giners play to make it shallow right, and it's two away. So Perry, their big home run threat, with 30 and 82 RBIs, their leading hitter at 311, pops up on the first offering to him here in the That'll make up the shortstop, Chris Meyer, hitless and four at bats in the series. Against the league, getting 218. Six homers, 24 runs batted in. Nobody on in front of him. He's stepping up in there now against Keaton. Pirates lead one to nothing, second inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a high fly ball. Down the left side, shortstop, third baseman, left fielder. Who's going to be there? Whoops! Fully overran the ball. As it turned out, Milner might have had a better look at that ball. No play because it went a long way right down where the box seat railing bends into the bullpen fence. Madlock, Foley, and Milner all converging. As it turned out, Foley overran the ball. Milner actually had a better look at it, but with that kind of traffic and all running that far, not too hard to understand how the ball would drop. And so it is no play, and it's no balls and one strike on Spire. Duffy Dyer would be next. Meyer batting seventh in the order for Dick Williams in the Expos. Now Bruce Keaton goes back off the hill, dunks at the bill of the cap, and off with the glove, rubbing on that baseball. The little nervous habits become enlarged in a game as big as this. Here's the 0-1. Right call, right in on his hands, and it's 0-2. And, Valentine, thrown out by Foley. Perry's popped up to Garner. Here's the 0-2. Smash, knocked down by Foley, but will have no play. He was lucky to keep it from going through. It goes as a base hit. 
Made a great effort just to get leather on it. Then when it bounced away from him, that took away any chance. And since he was stretched out throw knocking it down, they wouldn't have had a chance to have thrown him out in any case. So it's hit number two for Montreal and brings up Duffy Dyer, the catcher. Dyer batting 254. He's appeared in 64 of their games. He only had 18 hits, six doubles, one homer, and eight RBIs. 254 against the league, and in this series, he's hurt it. Three for five with two runs batted in. And the pitch to him out of the stretch, a swing and a miss from Keeson. Waiting now for Dyer, stepping out, getting some dirt on his hands. The pitcher, Steve Rogers, is due up next. The Pirates got a run in the opening inning. Foley drove in Moreno. Now Keeson uh, was ready, then stepped away. Fire at first with an infield hit. Dawson had their other hit. That was in the opening inning. Here's the pitch on the way to Dyer. Swing and a miss. Oh, he really clouded with that one. And it is 0 and 2. So Duffy Dyer. Played on a winner at New York with the Mets. Played on some exciting calendar clubs right here at Three Rivers with the Bucks. His first year as an expo. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Suck him out. to become Keaton's first strikeout victim of the night. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We played an inning and a half. Pittsburgh Pirates won. Montreal Expos, nothing. A lot will be riding on every... In the American League... Boston has scored four runs in the bottom of the first inning at Fenway Park, and after a full inning of play, it's Boston 4, Toronto, nothing. As we get ready to go to the bottom of the second, we have an announcement for you folks in your cars who may be out on the ramps and are wondering if you should come on in. Come on in. They are selling standing room only tickets right now. They have just started to sell standing room only tickets. There are still some available. So if you're in your cars and you're on your way to the park, come on over and get in on this big night of baseball right here at Three Rivers. There's standing room only, but come on over and join us. Here's Bill Madlock, the Mad Dog, stepping in. Madlock hitting 292, 14 homers and 83 runs batted in. He's been safely in 10 of his last 11 games. And in this series against Montreal, 4 for 10 with an RBI. Something's flying around down there that's bothering him. <laughs> He's chasing the Nats away. Now he's ready. Rogers winding. Pitch on the way to Madlock. Looks like he went after a low inside pitch, but maybe he didn't. I'm surprised Dyer didn't ask for an appeal on that. Now he does, and the first base umpire does indeed say strike one. Couldn't believe Dyer waited so long to ask. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul up to the right side, so it's a no ball, two strike count. 0 oh 2. Out in front of the count, no balls and two strikes. And here's the pitch. Nice to the ground, fair ball. Down toward the left field corner. That lock will dig. He's headed for second. He's going to have to hit the dirt. Fighting with a hustling Steps off the line. He was guarding against that ball, possibly going through the left side of the infield. So Marty made a fast leg got over in a hurry to cut the ball off, but Madlock beat the rapid second. Here is that on one of the heroes last night when he drove in three runs. He was two for four to get those three RBIs. He's batting 272, seven homers, a career high 49 ribbies. But trying to get more here on Rogers. Pirates leading one and nothing, going against the grain, but the runner got back. Oh, he made it close. Fires snuck in behind. Instead of making the whirling derby throw, turning and throwing against that natural motion. If you can do that, it saves some time, and he made it very close, but Mad Dog was back in time. Still no count to wet out. Here's the fifth. That is a strike on the outside corner. Not let her high, and it's strike one. Bill Geiner due up next. We're in the second inning. The Pirates have one run and four hits. The Expos are scoreless with two hits. There have been no errors in the early going. Keeson and Rogers, the opposing moundsmen. Stretch in the 0-1. High outside, ball one, strike one. Adlock 
Rogers leading away at second base again. Duffy Dyer drops the fingers. Steve Rogers takes one off. Now he has the one he likes. He took the long head off, stepped out on him. It can get to be a battle of nerves this time of the year, especially when the game is so big. A ball and a strike and a pitch on the way. Look down, whips him around on his shoulder. Two balls and a strike. With the two pitchers going here tonight, you can't dig in. you got to be loose up there. They'll give you a barber job with no lather. Cincinnati or Houston, work out Monday and play Tuesday. 
Heaston taking a little extra time with a runner at first. Scott is a definite threat to go. Leads them in stolen bases with 37. Throw over does not get him. Has a pretty good lead. Throw over again, but not close. Dawson, the batter. Stab on deck. Montreal batting in the third. Easton working with a one to nothing lead. Here's the pitch. Swing and a bouncer to third. Going to go to second base. Fourth play. Side retires. Madlock. The Garner second to first. Score is five to four. Montreal in the third. No runs. One hit. No errors. And a man left. So we played into the middle of the third at Three Rivers in Pittsburgh in an all-important clash here. Right now it's the Pirates one. Expos nothing. Moving to the home half of the third at Three Rivers. The top of the Pirate order is due. Moreno, Foley, and Parker. Right-hander Steve Rogers came out a little late, so he's got some more warm-up tosses coming. Tomorrow afternoon, a make-up game, and a chance for a lot of you folks who aren't able to make it to the evening games to get out and see baseball in the sunshine. That's tomorrow afternoon. It will be Bibby or Candelaria tomorrow. Here's Omar Moreno, started the first inning with a single. Stole second, got the third, and a wild pitch, and scored on a Foley single. will pitch for the Cardinals here tomorrow. Candy Man will go if he can, otherwise it'll be Bibby. The pitch to Omar. Swing, and he missed. And it's strike one. Ball game in the bottom of the third. Foley on deck off to the right side. Buck trying to add to a one to nothing lead as they bat here in the third inning against Rogers. Perry up in front of the bag at third. Here's the pitch. A chopper foul. Stop came over by the first base bag, but it was outside the line, four or five feet. And that's been fair. That might have been high enough to have jumped over Stop, but at any rate, it was foul, and the count is 0-2. Oh All right, everybody's back in place. Moreno not ready yet. He lets the umpire know that he's up in there and ready now. Stein given, right-hander delivering. Fouled off into the base of the backstop, and it's still 0-2. Oh After last night's victory by the California Angels, it's all over in the American. They know where they're going to play and who it'll be. Not that way in the National. Still undecided in each of the divisions. Pirates would like to take a step toward deciding who's going to win in the East right here tonight. Here's the 0-2. Tight above the knees. One ball and two strikes. Moreno back up in there and waiting. Rogers leans over to get the sign from Dyer and the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, struck him out. For Moreno fans, he becomes the second strikeout victim for Rogers in the game. And it'll wing up Foley, who single drove in Moreno in the opening inning. One of those two big games in the Western Division. Houston and Atlanta, no score in the second. Joe Negro against Joe Negro. And now San Diego has tied up the Reds 1-1 in the second. Dave Winfield is 33rd of the year in the second inning off Tom Seaver. All right, the pitch to Foley, swings and bounces a foul between Joe Lynette and the third base bag. Some of the fans out in the left field pavilion ready to flip for Foley, says their banner. No balls and one strike, pitch on the way. Swing and a bouncer to the right of second baseman Scott, up and throwing and got him, and it's two away. Scott with a good quick move to his right. Throws out Foley, two down in the Pirate third. And it'll bring up the right fielder, Dave Parker, who had a base hit into right field in the opening frame. So here's Dave Parker. He might be taking a beat on Cobra Country out there. See if he can double our pleasure here. It's one to nothing at the moment, Pittsburgh. Pitch on the way to Parker. Did he go? Yes, he did. Strike one. Tried to pull the barrel of that bat back and just couldn't do it. 0-1 to Parker. Stargill with the next. Nobody on base. Two down. Pirates scored a run in the first inning, and that's it. One to nothing Pirates right now. Rogers took off a couple of times. Now he's ready. 0-1 on the way. Down low. Parker can get another double. It'll be his career single season high in that department. He has 
has 44 doubles coming into tonight. A ball and a strike with two down and nobody on. Rogers leaning forward and delivers. Off speed. He hung the breaking ball up. He's just as glad it was up there and not a foot lower. That's a dangerous pitch. And it's two and one. Steve Rogers. Oh, he'll come at you. He'll battle you. So will Keaton. And here's the two one to Parker. Hit him on the fist. Popped him foul out of play off to the left side. Montreal Expo. Didn't turn out the way the predictor said it would be. It have been the Pirates and Phillies battling to the wire. Phillies dropped by the wayside back around Labor Day. Here's the 2-2. There's a line drive out of the right center field. It's going to drop. It's up against the fence. He's going into second with a new career high in
Pirates have stranded four over the first three. But with this lead, it's the Pirates one, Montreal nothing. Keith and still with that one run lead in a one to nothing game has this total board behind him as he warms up for the fourth inning against John Valentine and Perry. It's the Pirates 1 5 and 0. Oh. RBI Foley Moreno scored the run in the opening inning. Montreal scoreless on three hits and no errors. The pitcher is Rogers. The rusty Schaub standing off to the right. He's ready as Ott throws it down to second. They'll flip it around on the infield. Schaub will step in and right behind him is Lance. Very pleasant. Good evening, everyone. Well, here it is. This ball game jam packed to the Raptors at Three Rivers Stadium in a one nothing ball game. These two clubs have played so many one and two and three run games all year long. Now, Rusty Stop leading off the fourth. Stop playing first base. Tony Perez not in the starting lineup. Dave Cash not in the starting lineup. Gary Carter not starting. Stop is 0 for 1 in the ball game. Here's the pitch from Keeson to start the fourth and a strike in the inside corner. Stop had a notion he kept the bat back, but it was in the strike zone. Ellis Valentine to follow. And then Larry Parrish. Stop batting 259 of the year. Takes the strike and it's 0 and 2. First two innings, the Expos were doing a lot of first and second ball hitting in the third, and now here at the start of the fourth, they've been taking a bit more. Stop back in the count 0 and 2. The pitch swung on and laced into center field base hit. Omar Moreno over in right center. Bobbles the ball. Stop is heading for second. Here's the throw, and it is not in time. Rusty Staub is in safely. At second base, it'll go as a single for Rusty Staub. And an error judge on Omar Moreno. The first three games of this series, Pirates did not commit an error. The Expos committed eight. Here's right fielder Ellis Valentine. Line play by Foley. Stargell combining to get Valentine in the second. No score uh, for Montreal. Pirates got a run in the first inning. Valentine batting 280 on the year. He has 21 home runs and 82 runs batted in. Keith and Reddy, here's the pitch to Valentine. And that's in for a strike with a breaking pitch. Nobody out of the top of the fourth. Keeson's one strike pitch, swung on and fouled away. So the second straight hitter, Bruce has been out in front of Oak and two. with 13 of his Major League victories lifetime against the Montreal Expos. And he's had excellent success against the Expos in his career here at Three River Stadium. Now the set by Keeson. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on and tapped foul. Going to skip into the Montreal dugout on the third base side. one nothing Pirates lead. Montreal batting in the top of the fourth. The stop let off the inning with a single to center field, a bit towards right center, and then took second base on the misplay in center field. Keeps him in front of Valentine is the 0 2 pitch, and a sinker down low. Eric Gregg is the home plate umpire. He's one of the umpires in the National League that's gone to that special flap that he wears underneath the mask to protect the throat, Adam's apple area. Base umpires, Jack Harvey's at first, Andy Olson at second, and Frank Foley is the umpire at third. That's the crew working tonight's ball game. Here's a stretch by Keith in the one-two pitch. And it's down low. Valentine had a notion. They check with first base umpire Doug Harvey, but it'll stand as a ball. And it's two and two. Bob at second base, nobody out. Expos have had one hit in each of the first four innings. Pirates leading one to nothing. Now the 2-2 pitch. Valentine swings and fouls it off the end of the bat, rolling back to the screen so it can't remain to 2-2. Two two. Atlanta leading Houston 2 nothing in the third in Atlanta, Georgia. So the Braves have gotten Phil Necro a 2 nothing advantage against Joe Necro and the Astros. Diego, Cincinnati tied 1-1 in the third at Riverfront. Randy Jones against Tom Seaver. Yeah. 
Here's the stretch of the 55th swung on a ground ball to third. Badlock plays it on the short hop, fires the side Joe Valentine is out. And one away in the fourth. Fine play by Bill Madlock. Rusty Sharp remains at second base. And it'll bring up the Montreal third baseman, Larry Perez. He's over one, popped up to second baseman Garner in the second. Pirates against the Cardinals tomorrow, a 105 game here at the stadium. Then Friday night we play the Chicago Cubs at 7.35. Saturday afternoon at 2.15. And then Sunday afternoon, a 1.35 game. Final four home dates of the regular season for the Pirates. one nothing Bucks lead. Montreal batting in the top of the fourth. Keaton fits to Paris. Swung on, popped up in foul territory. Ed Ott coming back towards the screen, but it's on the net. Strike one. I understand that the reason that they pushed back the Sunday game is that Network is thinking about picking up the Sunday ball game. So it's been pushed back to 135 on Sunday, and that'll be our big prize day. 33rd annual prize day with over $45,000 worth of prizes to be given away. No balls and a strike on Parrish. Here's the stretch by Keith and the one strike pitch is swing and a miss. Ran the fastball up and in. First straight hit in the inning that Keith has been in front of 0 2. Stop at second base, one down. Now the stretch by Keaton, the 0-2 pitch swung on a half on to the shortstop Foley. He's going to go to first base to Sargio. Parrish is out and Stop moves to third. Foley took the third out at first base. And Stop moves up to third on the play, two away. And it'll bring up shortstop Chris Fire. Fire with an infield single in the second. And he'll step in with a 221 batting average. Dyer's on deck. Gary Carter missing the last two starts for the Expos. He jammed his right thumb and it pushed back the other day trying to make a tag on Alberto Lowy. Really puffed up. Jammed the thumb and there's much discoloration there of the thumb area. Gary Carter down in the starting lineup for the second straight day. Keaton Fitz to Spire is inside ball one. Philadelphia Phillies leading the St. Louis Cardinals 7-1 to in the fifth inning. Tim McCarver had a three-run homer in the third for Philadelphia. This afternoon, the Mets beat the Cubs 8-3. to Tom Hoffman, the winner. Donnie Moore, the loser. And Richie Hebner had a home run for the losing Mets. Foley and Madelon got together on the left side of the Pirate infield. Ed Odd went out to talk to Keeson. Now everybody back in place. Stop at third. Two out. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Spire. Swing and a miss. And it's 1-1. One one. Pirates leading 1-0. As the Bucks got the run on the first inning, RBI single by Tim Foley, back in Omar Moreno. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fire pops it up. Left side of the infield. Just got Foley calling forward, and he has it. Expos are gone in the fourth inning. No run. One hit, one pirate error, and after three and a half innings to play, Pirates won, and the Expos nothing. coming up. And the Pirate turn is out flying the flag of the Jolly Roger. He's been out to the tune of the theme music from the motion picture Rocky and the Parrot. Charged on the field after the Pirates got the final out against the Expos in the top of the fourth inning. one nothing Pirates lead in the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Bill Madlock followed by Ed Out and then Phil Garner. one nothing Bucks lead against Steve Rogers and the Montreal Expos. Similar type pitchers working here tonight, both sinker ball pitchers. Bill Madlock stepping in, he's in safely in 11 of his last 12 games as he doubled down the left field line in the second. Here's Rogers' first pitch to Madlock, and that's in for a strike. at Three Rivers Stadium for this final game of the series against the Expos. Pitch to Madlock, and it misses its one and one. Rogers 
Rogers, the one wants it. Plug on, line to left field, base hit. Romani will play the ball on one hop and flip it back in. Madlock, his second hit of the game. Leads off the fourth, and it'll bring up catcher head on. Now, this town has been fired up all week long. We've had four exciting games with the Expos. The whole thing started on Monday when the Chamber of Commerce got together with the city of Pittsburgh and the Pirates front office for the big pep rally in downtown Pittsburgh. And the big doubleheader on Monday night. The Expos and Pirates quit the twin bill. Bucks won last night. Pirates leading one to nothing in the fourth inning of tonight's game. That lock at first has 31 stolen bases. Here's a stretch by Rogers. And the pitch to Ott is a strike on the outside corner. Ott walked his first time up. Now the stretch by Rogers. Check of the runner at first base. One strike pitch. Swing and a foul ball. This year against the Pirates, he's making his fifth side of 79 against the Bucks. He pitched against us on opening day. Here's the runner going. Two strike pitches fouled off. Bill Madlock off on the pitch. Head out with a check swing foul ball. There's no decision for Rogers against Blind Level on opening day here at Three River Stadium. Rogers beat the Pirates in Montreal on May 23rd. Beat us on July the 29th in Montreal. And then, on September the 17th in Montreal, Rogers lost to Don Robinson. Bad lock at first base. Here's the stretch. The runner not going. Two strike pitches outside. Pirates with six hits in the game. Madlock and Parker with two apiece. Moreno and Foley had hits in the first inning, and that combination accounted for our opening run. Pirates leading one to nothing. Batting in the bottom of the fourth inning. Second baseman, Phil Garner, is on deck. All right, here's the stretch by Rogers. Lots off the first base. Madlock is back safely. Steve Rogers from Jefferson City, Missouri. Took too much time, and Ed Ott stepped out. pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Tried to hold up on a fastball up high. Strike out for Rogers, his third. One away in the Pirates fourth of the batter is second baseman Phil Garner. Bounced into a double play in the second. Phil coming into the game with a nine-game hitting streak in his last nine games. He's been swinging the bat at a 452 pace and his seasonal batting average up to 290. That lock on with one away. Stop holding Phil on at first base. Pirates one, Expos nothing, bottom of the fourth. Stretched by Rogers. Here's the pitch. Garner takes inside, ball one. Pitcher Bruce Keeson is on deck. Right-hander against right-handers. Throw to first base. Madlock back safely. A lot tossed by Rogers. Ready again, the right-hander comes set to the belt. Check of Matlock at first, throws that way, and Bill gets back in time. After tonight, the Pirates have four games left. After this evening, the Expos have five remaining. 1-0 pitch, Madlock running, swung out of line, shot into left field, go ball, get out of here, go on, hold on. Garner with a two-run shot to left field, Pirates lead the Expos, three to nothing. Jumping on a 
Harold Fitch Matlock was running. And a line drive home run over the wall in left field. Carter gets his 11th home run of the year. And the Pirates take a 3 to nothing lead over the Expos in the bottom of the fourth. Nobody on, one away. The batter keeps in the crowd. Standing, they want Garner to come back out, and there he is. Throughout all week long in this series, every time somebody said a home run, they've demanded that they come out and recognize the ovation. Everybody's been in tune to that all week long. All right, here's Keaton now against Rogers, and it's a five-ball one. about it. Garner's two-run dinger here in the fourth inning. Pirates in front, three to nothing. One one pitch. That's her foul, third base side. Caught Keith into the batter's box as well. One ball and two strikes. Garner's 11th home run of the year. It is sent back on September the 5th against John Denny. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Strike three called. Breaking pitch. Keaton caught looking. Rogers gets his fourth strike out. Two away in the inning. And we'll go to the top of the batting order in Omar Moreno. Three nothing. Pirates lead. The Garner home run might have been a shot heard around the world. Oh, I say it was smoke. He peppered it hard and long, and it jumped out. So Marty, the left fielder, hardly moved. And with this packed crowd at Three Rivers Stadium. Here's the pitch to Moreno. is swing and a foul ball, strike one. Omar one for two in the ball game. He set up our first run when he started the first inning with a single, swiped second with the third and a wild pitch and scored on a fully single. Here's the one strike pitch to Moreno, and it's outside. Nobody on, two down, bottom of the fourth. Here's the one one pitch, and it's outside. That's supposed to have Stan Boxen up in the first inning, and he is warming up again here in inning number four. Swing and a miss in the cat levels. Two down. Pirates have scored a fair here in the fourth. There's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on. A bounce to the mound. Rogers has it. He'll lob it to stop at first base. Pirates are retired in the fourth. However, the Bucks get two runs on two hits. A two-run homer by Phil Garner is 11th of the year. And after four innings to play, it's a Buccos three and Montreal nothing. Now and John Fott, the upstart rookie who has earned $81,000 by winning the last two tournaments on the 1979 tour. Before we say the action of the fifth inning with the Pirates leading three to nothing over Montreal, we'll pause for station identification. It's great to have you with us on the Pirates Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Well, Phil Garner's home run means another winner. Along the Pirate Network, congratulations to Kenny Robertson of Wheeling. Kenny, you'll receive our home run prize package, two tickets to a future pirate game, a $25 gift certificate from Western Pennsylvania Restaurant Association, and a 
Clyde Elder Gibson is just a kid from Ally Flores of Pennsylvania. Kenny Robertson of Wheeling, West Virginia, our latest winner. We've had 145 winners on the year. Duffy Dyer will lead off the fifth for Montreal. Keeson with a 3-0 lead. Dyer is 0 for 1. He struck out on the second. Keeson fits to Dyer is up high, ball one. Tomorrow afternoon, the Pirates continue their drive towards the National League Eastern Crown, a game against the Cardinals. Fits to Dyer in for a strike. Game time tomorrow, 1.05, and it's Buck Day. All tickets will be discounted $1.50. Also, Lou Brock's final appearance in his career in Pittsburgh. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch, swung on, foul back. You're working downtown, if you're... A late trick tomorrow. Good chance for you to see the Bucks against the Cardinals. A 105 ball game. A dollar fifty discount. It means that box seats are only four fifty. Reserved at two seventy five and a dollar seventy five, and the general admission for a dollar. Dyer swings and misses. Out of mid downstairs, and that is strikeout number three for Bruce Keeson. One away in the fifth, and Tommy Hutton is going to be the pitch hitter for Steve Rogers. The Expos are trailing by three. We're in the fifth inning, so Rogers is lifted for the pitch hitter. Steve Rogers worked the first four. He gave up seven hits, including the homer to Garner. Rogers struck out four. He walked two, one intensely, and he's charged with the three runs. Tommy Hutton steps in. He's batting 256 on the year. One home run, 13 runs batted in, and the first pitch from Keeson in for a strike. One down, top of number five. One strike pitch outside, one and one. Expos this year have been very proud of their bench. They've called it the Butt Squad, and Tommy Hutton came up with that name. They felt it was an underrated bench. Pitchers outside, and it's two and one. Hutton batting, Cromarty is on deck. Here's the two one pitch. A bouncer to third, came off the end of the bat, Matlock has it, fires to Sigel, Hutton is out two away. So the rubber band man, Bruce Keeson, quickly takes care of the first two outs. And Warren Cromarty will be the batter. Cromarty is 0 for 2, he'll step in with a 275 batting average. Pitch, left hander swings, a bouncer through the right side. Garner tried to dive out and head it off, but it got by him. So Cromarty gets hit number five for the Expos. They've had a single hit in each of the first five innings. Cromarty on with two down. Pirates leading three to nothing. As the Bucks went in front of one to nothing in the first on Tim Foley's single that drove Omar Moreno in. And then in the fourth inning with Matlock on, Phil Garner's line drive home run. is called. Phil Garner comes in to talk with the second base umpire, Andy Olsen, for a second. And Phil might have had the wind knocked out of himself a little bit there. He tried as he slammed the body down to the artificial surface trying to make the stop on the ground ball. Cromartie at first base has six stolen bases. Here's the pitch to Scott, and he takes inside ball one. So the Expos change their lineup a bit tonight. They've got Scott playing at uh, second base, rather, and batting in the number two spot. Dave Cash not in their starting lineup. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swung on, line to center, base hit. Up over the head of Keeson. Moreno in center plays it and flips it back in. Cromartie stops at second. Scott gets his second into the game. So two on, two down. It'll bring up center fielder Andre Dawson. And Bonson is going to be coming on for Montreal in the bottom of this inning. Pirate bullpen starting to move around now. And uh, understood before the game that Don Robinson would be down in the bullpen. Uh, Donnie's bothered by a bad shoulder, but right now Robinson is going to start warming up. Here's the stretch by Keeson. And the pitch to Dawson is a strike. So it's one of the things that Chuck has to consider, too. Uh, Enrique Romo pitched four innings last night, four near-perfect relief innings, and Enrique is warming up alongside of Robinson right now in the bullpen. We've 
Jack Jacoby a night off last night after Seek appeared in both games of a doubleheader Monday. Two on, two out. One strike pitch is fouled off. Going to roll into our dugout. So Buster's out in front of Andre Dotson. No balls and two strikes. Pirates three runs on seven hits. Expos no runs on six hits. Bruce down off the back side of the mound. And now moves back up on top. Right-handed, born in the great Northwest, state of Washington. Here's the two-strike pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Breaking pitch down, Dawson went fishing. Keeson gets his fourth strike out, and for Montreal in the fifth, no runs on two hits. A couple of Keeson strikeouts highlighted the inning, and after four and a half, Pirates three and Montreal nothing. And being live, he says the interest will be huge. of our ball game, the Pirates are leading three to nothing. The other two games that we're keeping our eyes on tonight, uh, Atlanta leading Houston four to nothing after three. Joe Negro against Phil Negro. And San Diego has taken a two to one lead over Cincinnati, fourth inning at Riverfront. number for the Reds is four. Avenue Montreal pitcher for you. Stan Bonson is on. Steve Rogers works the first four. Bonson is making his 55th appearance of the year for Montreal. All on relief. Three wins, one loss, five saves, an ERA of three. with no record against the Pirates in 79. Tim Foley will lead off. Foley won for two, had an RBI single in the first inning. That was our opening run, and we got two off the Garner home run in the fourth to lead 3-0. Three Pirates and ready. And the first pick to Foley. Swung out, ground ball to short. Fire up with it. On to Staub, and Foley's out. One pitch and one away in the fifth. Gotta bring up Dave Parker. Dave has two hits tonight. He's singled the first and doubled in the third. It's the eighth time in the last nine days that Dave has had two hits in the ball game. Eight times in the last nine days. Parker with two hits, and his batting average is up to 301. Curious. When we were in Montreal last week, was at 294, so his batting average has jumped seven points, a little over a week. Nobody on, one down, three nothing, Pirates lead, fifth inning, Parker swings and bounces it foul, strike one. By the way, Don Robinson still loosening in our bullpen down the left side. Donnie's the kind of pitcher that once you start him warming up, you might as well let him get his work in. Not the kind of pitcher you want to have warm up, sit down, warm up, sit down, that would be the problem. Ready with a one-strike pitch to Parker. And it's down low. Watson gets the side from Duffy Dyer. Now rocking in. That's nice stop. He tried to rock to the delivery, but stopped, and then Parker stepped out. Right-hander ready has the sign from Dyer. One-one pitch, and it's inside. They've really having quite a series. He is seven for fifteen in this four-game set with the Expos. Now the two-one pitch, swung on and fouled off to the left, out of play. Well, it's a big ball game. You can tell, of course, from the full house here at Three Rivers Stadium, and it's being covered all across the country. Matter of fact, the Pirates using the porch area down this third base line up on the 400 level for extra members of the media. Jam past normal press box off to our right. And up on the top side, there are about uh, four or five broadcast crews in addition to 
Right. What you're hearing along the Pirate Network. 2-2 two, two pitch, swung on and bounced off. So it's still. 2-2 two and two on Parker. Nobody on, one down. Last half of the fifth. Parker batting, Stigel is on deck. and gets the sign. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Caught Parker in the batter's box. He's checking here. Dave's got 23 hits in his last 60 at bat. So he's been swinging that club at a 383 pace. Two balls and two strikes on Parker. Nobody on, one down, bottom of the fifth. Pirates leading 3 nothing. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and it's inside. So Bonson takes it to the limit against Parker. Dan Bonson. Now makes his home down in Florida. Picked up from Oakland in May of 77. Ready with a payoff pitch. Ball four, walked him. is on. Run away. Stiger will be the batter. Willie will step in 0 for 1. He was walked intensely in the third. Don't really have to say it too much about what's going on here at the stadium. We are under the able control of our Good friend and engineer George Cleave, and you're hearing all the sounds and excitement of this ballpark. Here's the stretch. Parker's running. Pitches a ball for the second base. How's they got him? It might have been the Dave, as he was sliding in the second base, took his foot off the bag for a second, and before he got his hand on the bag, fire tagged him out. Looked like he had beaten the throw. There was a split second in there, apparently, where his foot had come off the bag and his hand had not yet gotten there. Parker, not happy with a call by Andy Olson, had a comment to make and then walked away, two away. So with nobody on and two down, starts with the batter to count one and on Willie. They say it looked like uh, Dave beat the throw, but sadly that's come out the back for a second and was called out on the caught ceiling. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Stargell. Then that's inside. days of this regular season. Boy, it's been a dandy. Here's the 2-1 pitch. 3-1. Nobody on, two down. Pirates got a run of the first, got a two-run homer from Garner in the fourth. Off-speed pitch is in for a strike, so it's a full count. Was not over shifting against Stargell, though shortstop fire is shaded a couple of steps closer to the second base bag. Here's the payoff pitch. Willie swings and misses and strikes out. Pirates in the fifth inning, no runs on one hit, excuse me, no runs on one walk. There was a caught ceiling in the inning, and after five complete, Pirates three and Montreal nothing. Will Art McKinnon is telling the folks here at the stadium about the 33rd annual prize day game against the Cubs this Sunday. A good time to remind you of the big day coming up on Sunday. Over $45,000 in prizes to be given away to lucky fans, including a $15,000 customized pirate van, a Frindle 16 Chanamaran trailer worth over $3,000, vacation to far, faraway places, trips to the pirates, color television sets, 
season tickets, much, much more. And all fans receive a pirate key tag, courtesy of our good friends at Hamill Quinlan Realtors. Like more information about Friday, don't forget the game on Sunday will start at 1.35. It's been pushed back a half hour. 1.35 starts on Sunday for Friday. Dave Kingman of the Chicago Cubs will be in. Thank you, Chuck. the six. Pirates leading three to nothing. As Stop steps in, he's one for two at a base hit to center field in the fourth. Atlanta leading Houston four to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. The latest there. Pick up to Stop is a high ball one. Here's the one-off pitch. Down low. One of the few hitters that Keith has been behind the count 2 0. And in fact, I can't remember the last time he was. Pitchers up high, now 3 0. Valentine to follow for Montreal and Larry Parrish. Here's the 3 0 pitch. And it's up high. Rusty Staub, who walked four times Monday night. Gets a free pass here in the sixth, and it's the first walk issued by Keith. On the field. That goes for him. Dallas Valentine will step in. He's 0 for 2. Has grounded out twice. Understand that uh, Dean Billick, who's the sports information director at the University of Pittsburgh, called today to tell us about his uh, grandfather, Wilmer Billick, 89 years of age today. Happy birthday, Wilmer Billick. And uh, understand also that Dean and his lovely wife, Alberta, will celebrate their... Uh, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Wilmer Billick and his wife, Alberta, will celebrate their 70th wedding anniversary in early November. They live out in Elizabeth. I looked at that quickly. I thought it was Dean and his wife that were celebrating, but I knew not, not a 70th. Here's the stretch of the pitch to Valentine. Ground ball left side. Good shot, Foley flips the guy to second for one on the Sigel double play. Valentine with a roller on the left side of the Foley-Garner-Sigel combination. Racing Staub and Valentine, two away in the sixth inning. Pirates in front, three to nothing. That'll bring up third baseman Larry Parrish. He's over two. Yeah, that would be uh, Dean's grandfather Wilmer, and uh, they are celebrating the 70th. Pitches down low on the knees for a strike. with two down. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swung on a bouncer. One hopper. Madlock plays it. Fires the Sergio Perez. John through the Expos. No run. No hit. Walk. Double play. Five and a half innings to play in this big showdown ball game between the Pirates and the Expos. It's our Buckos. Three of Montreal. Nothing. On the scoreboard in that uh, important game at Atlanta, the Braves are leading Houston by the score of four to nothing with Houston now batting in the top half of a fourth inning. And of importance to that game is what's happening in Cincinnati at Riverfront Stadium. And in the fifth inning there, the Reds hitting in the bottom of the fifth, San Diego leading by the score of 2-1. to one. San Diego uh, with single runs in the second and in the uh, fourth innings. And that's how the scoring has gone in that ball game. We have a direct line to Atlanta, and uh, we might be checking in there a little bit later on to see what's going on in that Houston-Atlanta game. Cincinnati leading Houston by a game and a half. With uh, 88 wins and 69 losses, Houston at 87 and 71. Houston with four games remaining, but they're all away. One in Atlanta, and then they'll finish up at Dodger Stadium with three games on September 28th, 29th, and 30. Cincinnati has five games remaining, all five at home, two at uh, San Diego, and then uh, three at Atlanta, September 28th, 29th, and 30th. So that's a look at how things shape up in that race in the National League's West Division. In the American League, Boston is leading Toronto by the score of 6-2. to two. Boston hitting in the bottom of the seventh at Fenway. The Orioles are batting in the bottom of the fifth at Memorial Stadium, and are really socking it to the Tigers by the score of 10-1. to one. The Orioles playing it out after clinching the American League's East Championship uh, earlier last week. And, of course, the uh, California Angels clinching that West on Tuesday. Okay, let's get back to the action now at Pittsburgh. 
the Expos. They fly to Montreal. They're scheduled to leave at midnight tonight. They'll play Atlanta, in Atlanta. Doubleheader tomorrow, and then they are home. The Expos are home against the Phillies over the weekend. John Milner lays off the bottom of the sixth, 3 nothing Pirates lead, and Milner takes down low ball one. Milner is 0 for 2, has grounded out twice. John with a 280 batting average. What a great year Milner's had. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Bats in the dirt. Madlock is on deck and then head on. Well, I almost forgot about it, but the big catalyst for our two-run fourth inning was the Jolly Roger. As, uh, the Parrot brought out the big flag just before the start of that bottom of the fourth. Pitch is fouled off to the left. Everybody's got a special good luck charm. Apparently today it was the Jolly Roger who was paraded the skull and crossbones on the field by the Parrot. With the catalyst of that big two-run homer by Garner. Pitch to Milner is up high. Three and one. Still a lot of time in this ball game, but Pirates right now pretty good position. Keith and pitching well. Bonson pitching for the Expos. He came on in the fifth. He's working his second inning of relief. Here's the 3 1 pitch, and he walks Milner. Second walk issued by Bonson. Milner's going to be lifted for the fifth runner, Matt Alexander. Alexander is on as the fifth runner for Milner. And the batter is Bill Matlock. Singled and was on base when Garner hit his home run in the fourth. Badlock's batting average has jumped 14 points in the last nine days. He's up to 295. Here's the stretch by Bonson. Alexander running at the ball. Throw to second base off target. And Badlock is in safely. Alexander's in safely with a stolen base. Matt Alexander with his 12th stolen base of the year. He's at second base, and nobody out. Bill Matlock's the hitter, and of course, Bill has never had a batting average under 300 in a season. His first major league year was with the Texas Rangers. He hit 351. He had three 300 plus seasons with the Cubs, two 300 plus years with the Giants. Came to our ball club. Batting average was way below 300, but he has come up to the 295 mark now. Alexander at second base. Nobody had last half of the sixth. Pirates leading three to nothing. Boston ready. Check of the runner. 1-0 pitch is up high. Both then working. Bonson ready. And the 2 0 pitch. 3 0. Left hander Woody Fryman and right hander Bill Atkinson throwing in the Montreal bullpen. Now the stretch. Here's the 3 0 pitch. Ball four. Walked him. Walks to Milner and Madlock. Pirates have two on with nobody out. Alexander is the runner at second base. That off will be the batter. Duffy Dyer off to the mound. Chris Fire coming in. They'll double check their play just in case that out drops the bunt down. Bottom of the sixth inning. Pirates leading three to nothing. Williams on his way to the mound. He was calling 
for time. He's got the left hander prime in his bullpen. Williams goes to the mound. Pirates have two on and nobody out here in the last of the six. And Williams is going to go to his bullpen. Bonson worked one plus inning. One strikeout, he walked three. And it looks like it's going to be the right-hander Bill Atkinson coming on. Percentage move in terms of that out is a left handed batter, and he is our next hitter. He's going to the right hander, Bill Atkinson. And he's likely not going to be right here again. The umpire had the right to forfeit this game to the Expos. The field conditions Atkinson. Viable. We've seen a bit of him. He's coming on for his 10th time this year for Montreal. Two wins, no losses, one save. On the field. Current run average is 0. 0.64. A young man from Chatham, Ontario, Canada. Baltimore leading Detroit tonight, 10 to 1 in the fifth inning. Boston in front of Toronto, 6 to 2 in the sixth. The Yankees lead Cleveland 3 1 in the fourth inning. Seattle's in front of Milwaukee, 1 0 in the third. Here it's 3 0 Pirates. Part of the action tonight and before the ball game. Presentation to Willie Stargells throughout the year. We've asked you to vote for your favorite pirate player and our good friends at Daily Juice Products putting together the favorite pirate contest. And Willie Stargell presented with a very impressive trophy before the game. He was voted the favorite pirate. So uh, our congratulations to Willie. A very inspiring ovation for Willie as he accepted the award. And he told the fans here at the ballpark that he considered an award from each and every individual fan, and he accepted it with a great deal of humility and pride. Also, before the game, the Fox Chapel High School Band performed. We've got the Frazier High School Band here tomorrow for Buck Day. It's been a battle of the bands all week long. We've got the Churchill Area High School Band slated to be here Friday. Austin Town Fitch High School Band slated for Saturday, and the Brentwood High School Band going to be here Sunday. Bill Atkinson is ready. Alexander is the pitch runner for Milner is at second base. Manlock at first and nobody out. Three nothing. Pirates lead. We are in the last half of the sixth inning. Pirates got an RBI single from Foley in the first and a two run homer from Garner in the fourth. Set by Atkinson. Here's the pitch. It is up high to head out ball one. Atkinson, not a big guy. 5'8, 165 pounds. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Just stepping off of it. Runners lead away. Nobody out. Stretch and the 1-1 pitch is running foul. Parrish was back a bit at third. Ed Ott was trying to tap it that way, but he popped it over the Montreal dugout. It's one and two. Ed Ott batting 271 on the year. Battle of the top two clubs in the National League Eastern Division. <laughs> There's a buck flying around Ed Ott's head, and Eric Gregg came up and swept him on the back of the batting helmet. Here we're ready now. One, two pitch. Swung on line foul. Way out in front. Good rip, but popped it up over the Montreal bullpen. It's still one and two. Pirates leading Montreal by a half game in the National League Eastern Division race. And the Pirates leading tonight three to nothing. Atkinson ready. Checking the runners. One, two pitch. Is high and outside. Two outstanding ball clubs. Last week it was in Montreal. The Pirates swept a two-game set. This is game four of the current series here at Three Rivers. Pirates winning two of the first three. 
Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on. A line shot down the left field line. Ball's going to drop in. Back to the corner. Alexander out third. He scores. 4 to nothing. Pirates. Madlock rounding third. Here's the relay from Spire to the plate. It is not in time. Go to third. And Ott flies. He's in safely. Ball rolls away from third. And Ed Ott is in the third base. Pirates now lead 5 to nothing here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Ed Ott doubling into the left field corner. in the middle three. Got two in the fourth, three in the sixth, and still doing business. One strike pitch. It is bunted foul. Looked like it caught the home plate umpire Eric Gregg. Tony Bartero, my trainer, started out to see if Gregg was all right, but apparently Eric is okay. Somehow that ball must have gotten through his mask. Or at least got him uh, in some way. He's all right. No balls and two strikes on Keeson. Garner is second. Nobody out. Atkinson ready. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung out a shot to stop. He's going to turn it on Garner. The throw is in the dirt, but and Garner's safe. Garner is in safely at third, and Keeson is on at first. Lefty stop. Made the play up the first base line. He tried to get Garner at third. But his throw bounced, and before Paris could get the glove down, Garner hustling safely in the third. the fielder's choice. Garner to third, Keeson to first, and Dick Williams on his way to the mound. Bill Atkinson faced three batters. He's given up back-to-back -back doubles to Ott and Garner. And Woody Fryman is going to come on here in the sixth inning. and gave up back-to-back -back walks to Milner and Madlock. Alexander was a pitch runner for Milner. And then Ed Ott 
doubled into the left field corner, driving in Alexander and Matlock. Then Garner doubled inside the third base bag to drive in Ed Ott. against uh, Duffy Dyer on the play that had Ed Ott going in safely to third. That was incorrect. I called it right the first time and then misunderstood the communique from Dan Donovan. Uh, it was a double for Ott. He went to third on the throw. There was no error. That last play, Keeson reaching on the fielder's choice. They tried to turn it on Garner. Now Woody Fryman is on. Six to nothing. Pirates lead. And Fryman was coming on for Montreal to make his 43rd appearance of the year. Three wins and five losses, ten saves. Lyman with an earned run average of 2.89. So he is their fourth pitcher following Steve Rogers, Dan Bonson, and Bill Atkinson. Ever since Garner's home run of the fourth, there's been a constant buzz through this place. If that's understandable, the way this thing has gone. Leading six to nothing. And we're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Keep in mind that with Garner at third and Keeson at first, still nobody out. Omar Moreno will step in one for three at a base hit, wipe the base, go to run in the opening inning. is up all the way around. Simon Reddy, here's the pitch to Moreno. And it's inside, ball one. Simon, no wins, no losses, two saves against the Bucks in 79. 1-0 pitch. Swung on, base hit, center field. Garner scores, it's 7 to nothing Pittsburgh. Keith has stopped at second. Omar, the third at first base, and he holds on. Gets his 68th RBI of the year. Pirates have scored four runs in the sixth inning and lead seven to nothing. And Tim Foley will be the batter. Foley one for three at an RBI single to first. Tim in his last 14 games been swinging the bat at a 3.33 pace. Keaton at second, Moreno at first, and still, there are no outs. Foley is the seventh Pirate to bat in the inning. Here's the pitch. Ball is fronted out in front of the plate. Climbing off the hill, he'll turn and fire to Scott. On the sacrifice, Keaton moves to third. And Moreno to second, the sack went one to four. So that's the first out of the inning. Pirates leading seven to nothing. And the batter will be right fielder Dave Parker. Getting the seven to nothing lead for Bruce Keaton. Parker stepping in, two for two with a single, a double, and a walk. Their infield is up all the way around. Seven runs, ten hits for the Bucks. No runs, six hits for Montreal. Simon full lined up, pitch to Parker inside. Jumps out of the way, ball one. That's in for a strike. Dave's not happy with the call. Climb in the windup and the 1-1 pitch inside. Pirates have scored 28 runs in this series so far. 22 of our 28 have come in the middle three innings. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Of course, in the first game Monday night, the big inning for the Bucks was the sixth when they got three runs, coming back from a 2 nothing deficit to win it 3-2. to two. Last night, 
five. The Bucks got three in the fifth, four in the sixth. Here tonight, the Pirates getting two in the fourth and have scored four in the sixth inning. Two on, one out, two two pitch. Ground ball, second baseman Scott. He's got Keaton hung up, throw to the plate, and Dyer making the tag on Bruce. He tried to jump away from him, but Dyer made the tag. Keaton is out. The play goes four to two. Keaton is out. Moreno's at third, and Parker's at first. So with two away, that'll bring up Willie Stargell. Willie, 0 for 2 tonight. Stargell gotten a lot of standing ovations this week, and this one here in the sixth inning added to the list. Batting with runners at first and third and two away. Pirates in front, 7 to nothing over Montreal in the last of the sixth. Here's the pitch to Stargell. That's in for a strike. Now the stretch. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Outside, 1-1. One one. Bill Robinson is on deck. Milner started the inning, and he walked. Gave way to the pitch runner, Matt Alexander. Bill Robinson's going to go into play left, and so he's on deck. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, popped up, coming on, fire. Third baseman Parrish is there, and Parrish makes the play. Takes fire, ran by the ball. Parrish makes the grab. The Pirates in the sixth inning get four runs. On three hits, took advantage of a couple of walks in the inning. After six innings of play in the big showdown battle with Montreal, it's our Buckos seven and the Expos nothing. Bill Robinson is now in left field. He'll take the number five spot of the Pirates batting order. As our ball game gets ready to move to the seventh inning, we'll bring you up to date. San Diego leading Cincinnati two to one in the seventh. Atlanta's in front of Houston seven to one in the sixth inning. So if those scores stay as they are, the uh, lead in the National League West will stay a game and a half with the Astros trailing the Reds. Here tonight, big showdown battle, jam-packed out the Three Rivers Stadium. The Pirates, seven runs on ten hits and one error. The Expos, no runs and six hits, no errors. We go to the seventh now. Here's Milo Hamilton. All right, Lanny, as Keaton really has some room to work here now. He can uh, go to more of that hard stuff he would prefer to, and if he wants to, he can go right after him here now. Schweier, who is the shortstop and batting seventh, is going to lead it up. Then it will be Duffy Dyer. Then they will go to the bench because they've got the boot. Keaton in front with a score of seven to nothing. Keaton has pitched a marvelous game. He's only thrown 68 pitches in the first six innings. And believe it or not, he did not throw a ball in the first two innings, if you can believe that. Everything was either an out or a strike in the first two innings. That is unbelievable. Twist him around in the shoulder and it's 4-1. Boy, what a crowd. And are they enjoying it? Watching their battling bucks try to go a game and a half in front. Send the Expos out of here reeling into Atlanta. That's a strike on the outside corner. The knee is just fired. Dyer on deck. Fires had a single and a pop-up. And the pitch on the way. Two tight on the letters. Two balls and one strike. Fire a 220 hitter as he stands in. He's one for six in the series. Scott has had two hits for them. One each for Spire. Stop. There's a high drive. Deep left. Ballpark won't hold it. Home run. So Spire gets them on the board with a leadoff home run in the seventh inning off Keaton. Keaton's 12th gopher ball of the year. And him shut out for six. Now they get on the board with a Spire homer. And for Spire in the home run department, his seventh of the year, 25 runs batted in. his first against the Pirates. Bouncer foul down the third base side off the bat of Duffy Dyer. Pirates seven runs, ten hits. The Expos one run, seven hits. Our bullpen is starting to stir. Now this is a Wednesday night ball game. You've got a six-run lead. You've got a bullpen that has not been overworked now. Everybody's ready. There is a strike right across the runners, and it's 0-2. And you might need Keaton 
in that Sunday game. So you're not going to let him run the gamut here tonight. Here's the 0-2 pitch. There's a high pop into shallow right center. Geiner out. Geiner there. Has it. A high pop up into shallow right center. Geiner took charge immediately. Went right out. Got under it quickly and easily. Went away. And now they'll go to their bench. And this will be Jerry White. Which hitter? Jerry White, a 297 batter. He's done a good job for them this year. Three homers and 18 runs batted in. for Woody Bryman. White will be batting left-handed, of course, against the right-hander, Keeson. A run is in on the leadoff homer by Spire. The dynamic duo heats it up in the Pirate bullpen. That, of course, is Jacoby and Jackson. White, the pinch hitter, batting for Woody Bryman. Keeson's pitch to him. Outside, corner, strike it, goal. Oh, and one the count. Nobody on and one away. White batting left-handed. Cromarty, another left-hand batter to follow. Keeson into the motion. Pitch on the way. Up high, and it's one and one. Tomorrow afternoon, St. Louis Cardinals will be here. That's another makeup game, and it's a buck day for you. Reduced prices everywhere. There's a bouncer, second base. Big hop, Geiner, fire to Willie. Two away. Second to first, Geiner to start. will take care of the pinch winner, Jerry White. Go to the top of the order with Warren Cromarty, who is 1-4-3. And a base hit in the fifth inning. So Keeson, while he's had somebody on in every inning, has managed to be tough. He's got a six-run lead right now as he works in the seventh inning. And Warren Cromarty waiting, leaning out over the plate. Bouncer, right side again, Garner, right there. Should be easy. Side retires. Garner to Sargill, second to first. To the leadoff homer, that was all zero. One run, one hit, the home run by Spire. No errors, nobody left. And now a sellout crowd here, standing room only, to see their battling bucks try to go a game and a half up on Montreal. And as they stretch, here's the score. Pittsburgh Pirates 7, Montreal Expos 1. Peak situation here as far as uh, picking up ground. And Cincinnati right now, however, trailing San Diego by the score of 2-1 to one in the 7th. With a blaring of We Are Family in the background, this crowd ready to settle down after their stretch. James is the new pitcher. A welcome to the Alcoa employees night out here. They brought a large group. Robinson will be batting for the first time. Pitcher Bob James on in relief to face Bill Robinson. Inside above the knees, and it's ball one. We're getting a break in just as soon as we can. Here's the pitch to Robbie. Followed it off up to the right. Here's the good spot right now. The Battle and Bucks in Montreal at Pittsburgh on the Pirate Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Stab, he'll go to the bag himself, and it's one away. So Bill Robinson, first time up tonight, bounces to stab at first, makes it one down in the seventh, and will bring up Bill Madlock with a double, a single, a walk, and is scored twice. Madlock taking a shot at 300. He's batting 295 at this moment. James, a big right-hander, bringing it up to him, and a breaking ball down and away. And our good friends from Johnstown down tonight celebrating an anniversary, George and Millie Salem. Good friend and business associates of Captain Willie Starchill. And George and Millie don't miss many. Best wishes on their 31st wedding anniversary. Two balls and no strikes. They have used Rogers, Bonson, Atkinson, Fryman, and now James. And there's a the ball to make it 3-0. Who's had a couple of runs batted in and five RBIs in the last two nights is in the on deck circle to the right. Pirates leading seven to one, bottom of the seventh. That is a ball he walks in, second straight time that the Mad Dog has walked. Somebody wrote me a letter that I got today said that they don't like the nickname Mad Dog for Bill Madlock. 
Well, it's pretty hard to change it. He's got it on the back of his warm-up jersey that he wears before the games. He's been called that by his teammates for years. Pretty hard to change one that's that much entrenched. That's the sixth walk to go with ten hits. So the Bucks have had some base runners. Here is Ed Ott with a walk, a single, a double, and two RBIs. Throw to first. Does not get Madlock. Madlock with 31 runs batted in. James to the stretch, looks back. Throws over, close, but Madlock gets back in. Ed Ock batting. Geiner, who has had three RBIs with a two-run homer and a run-producing double, is beyond deck hitter for the Bucks. Pirates led one to nothing, three to nothing, seven to nothing. It's now seven to one as Fire homered for the Expos in the top of this, the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul. Six in the backstop. The Pirates can hang on. They will go 96-62. A game and a half in front. Right, the right hander ready now. Time call because the ball was stuck in the screen, was knocked back through because they couldn't squeeze it back through. Must not have been too scratched. The umpire put it in his pocket. Look back over the shoulder, throw to first, not in time. Want to welcome the Cardinal Network with their flag station, KMLX, in St. Louis. That adds about 120 stations carrying this game all over the Midwest and Southwest. Here's the pitch, high outside of all. And the American Forces Radio with us again all night tonight, theming this game all around the world on the Pirate broadcast here as we play the Montreal Expo. Glad to have you with us, and what a night it is for the Pirates. Look back. Runner going. Swing. Bouncer. Shortstop. Got to reach it. And throw. And got it. A good recovery by Spire. With Madlock running, he was headed toward the bag. He had to retrace his step, grab the ball, throw off balance, and got it out. Very fine play by Spire. Makes it two way in the inning and on the play. Madlock gets into second base. play in the second, but he hit a two-run line drive homer in the fourth over the left field fence. Got a double that drove in a run in the sixth, so he's driven in three, scored two. Geiner's been busy. So here's Strap Iron with a runner at second. See if we can get the run back. Although I don't think they're going to give Geiner another swing because Keaton's due up next. They're going to put him on intentionally. the intentional pass, and Keeson will be coming up. Pirates in front, 7-1. to one. All right, there it is. Two on, Madlock second, Garner first, two away, and Bruce Keeson will get a nice hand because he's hit a good, solid game. In fact, they're going to give Keeson a standing ovation. Second and first, two down, and a strike call to Keeson. Drop down three quarters, got a breaking ball over the outside corner at the knees. At the belt, James looking, kicks and fires. There's a line drive hit in the center field. Here comes Madlock. The throw will be to third base, and it bounces away from Parrish. Safe everywhere. Madlock scores run number eight. equal here now, and 
Moreno, two for four with a run batted in and a run scored. With a chance to really fatten the cat here with runners at second and third and two away. Low inside, ball one. Monday night, one last night, big, trying to win again here. A line foul up to the left side into the seat, and it's one and one to Moreno. The league's leading base stealer who got one in the first inning tonight. That got us on the board when Foley drove him home. It gives him 73 stolen bases for the year on his way to his second straight stolen base title. For you folks joining us in St. Louis, Lou Brock sometime will give him his second Lou Brock trophy next spring. Breaking pitches in for a strike. Took something off of it. One ball, two strikes. Geiner at third, Keaton at second. First base is empty. A run is in, and the Pirates have their seven-run advantage again. It's eight to one, Pittsburgh over Montreal in the bottom of the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Smash foul down the right side. Skips off the box seat railing and down toward the right field line. One ball and two strikes. The groaning is because the Pirate, the young lady down the right side, let it go through. With an eight to one lead, you'd think they'd give her the benefit of the doubt. But then there are some people who are never happy. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Hit an instep and fouled off to the left side. this ball game is over. If the Bucks hang on, there'll be a game and a half in front with four left, and Montreal will have five. The St. Louis Cardinals will be in Pittsburgh tomorrow for a 105 game. It'll be Candelaria or Bibby against Porsche. And tomorrow evening at five, the Atlanta Braves will host the Montreal Expos in a Twilight Night doubleheader. Here's the one-two to Omar. Almost reached across for an off-speed pitch, laid off in time to level the count at two and two. You are, and whatever you're doing, all around the country and the world now with American Forces Radio and with us. Final Hamilton along with Lannis and Terry bringing you all the pirate action with the Expos in a big, big ball game here. Bounce foul down the right side. This is the second head on collision in a couple of weeks here. Last week at Montreal, the Bucks went to the Olympic Stadium, took two out of two, and went in front by two. Then on the rest of the road trip, the Pirates had a little trouble in Philly, and the Expos kept on winning and moved back on top. They came to town leading by a half. At this moment, since the Bucks have taken the first two out of three, the Pirates are leading by a half. And now the 2-2 from James DeMoreno. Bounced in the dirt, a good block of it by Duffy Dyer. So we're due a payoff pitch to Moreno with two runners in scoring position. Geiner, who was intentionally passed, is at third. Bruce Keeson, the pitcher who singled in a run, is at second. James, a big young right-hander. Boy, he's got size. Moreno can barely see the center fielder with this guy standing on the mound. Here's the 3-2. Low inside, he walks it. So that'll bring up Jeff Foley. That's the third walk in the inning by Bob James. It's the eighth walk of a pirate. And pitching coach Jim Brewer is on his way. They've got their bullpen busy again. Dick Williams knows that if he loses tonight, it's going to be an uphill battle. So the conference will take place. Brewer has not waved to the bullpen. Duffy Dyer, Larry Parrish, and James form the quartet in blue on the hill. The Pirates have eight runs, 11 hits. The Expos, one run, seven hits. And as our St. Louis audience joins us on the great Cardinal Network, hope that our good friend over there, Dolan Walsh, is listening as the... Network, one of the many as a part of the Anheuser-Busch family, sponsoring the games all over the country. Here's the pitch, and it is a strike call, split the plate in two at the knees on Foley. Foley tonight drove in a run in the first inning with a single. Since then, it's bounced to second, grounded to short, and sacrificed. Listen to this crowd, Foley, Foley. That ball bounced off the bat handle and back to the bat boy by the on-deck circle on the right side. who came early in the season in the trade with the New York Mets has become a big favorite and with good reason. And a great job at short. 
And really been surprising with his bat. Looping line drive, hit right field. One run will score with Garner. He's in big wave. He scores. And into third goes Moreno. Foley gets two RBIs on a two-out single. Foley Toledo, the crowd is yelling.
And he ball in on that side. It's Keeson's job to get over, and he was there to take the throw from Garner. Stargell, moving quickly to his right, realized that it was a better play for Strap. Let it go under his glove. Sure, it's four to one, and make it one away. Got to bring up Andre Dawson. One for three, had a base hit in the first inning. It gave him a ten-game hitting streak. One away in the eighth inning and leading 10 to 1. And the strike is called. Dr. Louis Zona from Newcastle. Appreciate the fine letter and always enjoy hearing from the gang up in Chuck Stan up in Tanner Country. There's a strike in the inside corner. Got him in a hole, 0 and 2. Walked around a moment. Now he's back up on the hill and ready. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul dropping right at the catcher's feet. Oh, he ran that ball right in on his knees. I don't know how he got enough wood on it to foul it. It's still 0-2. Four more games after tonight for the Pirates. Five more after tonight for Montreal. All four for the Pirates are at home. One with the Cardinals, three with the Cubs. Two of the five remaining for the Expos. Doubleheader tomorrow in Atlanta. Then they go home for a weekend of three with the Phillies. In the case of a tie, Montreal won the toss. We would play in Montreal at 1.35 Monday afternoon. There's a tapper right side, right to Stargell. He's going to flip it to Keith and Dawson is out, and it's two away in the Montreal eight. Here is Rusty Staub, lined left in the first, single in the fourth, walked in the sixth. the William J. Paxton's on Longbow Drive here in Pittsburgh for their nice letter regarding the broadcast this year as we get down to the tail end. Folks have been most generous with their mail this year, and believe me, we appreciate it. Job the batter with a 1-0 count. Valentine would be next. Here's the pitch to Staub. Off speed, and it floats low. Two balls, one strike. the way to Staub, and it's low for a ball. Staub hitting 267 as he stands in. One for two tonight, and the 3-0 to him. Strike at the knees, inside corner, three and one. Kenny Boyer, who had his contract renewed for 1980, will bring the Cardinals in here tomorrow. Here's the 3-1, and he walks in. Little sinker low outside. That puts Staub on with two away. That is the second walk given up by Keith, and both have gone to Rusty Staub in his last two trips. Dallas Valentine 0 for 3. So Staub's at first with two down. Stargell doesn't need to bother about holding him. He wouldn't be running under any conditions, let alone when you're down by nine. And with two away. Mr. Keeson is not ready yet. He's really working on that baseball out behind the hill. Valentine has bounced to short, grounded to third, and hit into a double play. 0 for 3 tonight, 3 for 15 in the series. In the last series between these two evenly matched teams. And the pitch on the way to Valentine. Down low with that slider, and it's 1-0. and Larry Parrish, their leading home run hitter, is due up next. With the 10-1 to advantage, and two away, even after the walk. There's nobody warming up in the bullpen. Keeson has been very, very tough here tonight. And here's the 1-0 to Valentine. He tried to hold. They're asking for an appeal. First base umpire says no, he didn't. And it'll be two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. A strike on the letters inside corner.
Sox fans getting in on the defense chant again here tonight. Hayes swinging a miss, and it's three and two. Tomorrow afternoon on Buck Day, when all tickets are discounted to dollar fifty, it'll be Lou Brock's final appearance in Pittsburgh, closing out a fabulous career. And of course, even if the Bucks hang on here and go a game and a half up, it's another crucial game to the pennant race. Stab running, fly ball center. Moreno to his right, eight steps, has it, side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, a walk and one left. The Pirates will come to bat in the eighth with this lead. Pittsburgh 10, Montreal 1. Spectacular bid prep for his upcoming duel with Affirmed in the Jockey Club Gold Cup by working a mile and an eighth at Pimlico Racetrack in Maryland. The Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner worked under exercise rider Bobby Smith, trainer Bud Delp, calling the workout great, just great, especially the way he wanted it. Delp says the workout was Spectacular Bid's longest in several months and will be the last before the Colt meets Affirmed in the $350,000 race on October 6th at Belmont Park. Bid will be shipped to New York on Tuesday. First baseman Bill Buckner wants an apology from former Chicago Cubs manager Herman Franks. Franks was quoted as labeling Buckner as anything but the All-American boy he thought he was. Franks reportedly made the remarks before he resigned as manager on Monday. Buckner says Franks was out of line when he said those things. Buckner denied that he was ever jealous of home run slugger Dave Kingman. Franks was quoted as saying that uh, Buckner was uh, necessary to force his announcement sooner than he had planned. 2,043 paid here tonight with over 48,000 in the house. As the Buck fans have come out to cheer on their battle in Buck. And it looks like it's worked because if they hang on here, they will have taken three out of four and five out of the last six from the Expos going back to last Monday at the Big O up in Montreal. Remember the game tomorrow starts at 1.05. Why don't you work a half a day, take a lunch right here at the park and watch your Buck to increase that lead and put the pressure on Montreal because they won't play until after our game is over tomorrow. And they have a doubleheader in Atlanta at five. We ought to be long gone by then. that will be something if you can put it up to two full games. And that's what the Pirates will be shooting for here tomorrow afternoon. Here's Willie Stargell. for the Expos. Foul back here to the left into the seat. G-U-L-L-I-C-K-S-O-N. Bill Gellickson, our first look at him, and he becomes their sixth pitcher. Dick Williams had no other choice. This is a big game. There's a line drive to left. Cromartie got a late start, but then comes on and makes the play. Is out and a liner to left. But as always, they give him another hand. Bill Robinson batting for the second time tonight. Came on in the seventh for Milner and his first at bat. He bounced out to their first baseman. Nobody on, one down. Gullickson delivering inside low, ball one. In the ninth inning for Montreal, they will have Parrish. Fire and Dyer. Pittsburgh in front, 10 to 1. Swing and a miss, and it's 1 and 1. The Pirates get this ball game. They'll be 96 and 62. And a game and a half in front. Here's the 1 1 on the way. Line drive hit, left field. A broken bat single to left. So Robinson is on. It's his first hit of the night. The first hit off Gullickson, and the Pirates have 13 hits in the game. And here is Bill Matlock, a double, a single, a pair of walks, and he scored three times. 
division. And here, Bruce Keeson has gone all the way against six Montreal pitchers. Last night was a pivotal game for the Pirates. Tonight was another one after splitting the doubleheader Monday. Most felt that the Pirates needed to take three out of four. It looks like they're going to do it. Keeson has fit very, very well here tonight. He's got a nine-run lead. And Larry Parrish will be leading it off, followed by Spire and then Dyer. And a century on the birthday of our Pirate fans today, Emilia Fassett, 100 years old today from North Irwin. I uh, hope that it's been a happy day on the 100th birthday for Emilia Fassett. And for all Pirate fans everywhere, taking three out of four here after we get three more out. Parrish is 0 for 3. Keeson's pitch to him is up high a ball. Keeson has walked for 2. He has struck out 4. He has faced 7 hits effectively. A home run by Spire, their only tally. Strike call with a slider on the outside corner. Pirates have 10 runs on 14 hits. Expos, 1 run, 7 hits. High pop on the first base side. Keeson yelling for Stargell to take it, and he does. Midway between the mound and the first base line. was a home run in the seventh inning over the left field fence. Camargo had a big pinch hit for them in their comeback victory on Monday night in the second game of the doubleheader is the on-deck pinch hitter. Low, a ball that's fire. Keeson takes a look after the scoreboard. He's got to like what he saw. He's leading 10-1. Here's the 1-0 to fire. Lines it foul way up on the left side. going to try to come out tomorrow and see the Bucks in another important game with the St. Louis Cardinals. Give a final salute to Lou Brock. And remember, the discounted tickets a dollar and a half. It's Buck Day tomorrow. Game is at 105. If you're not able to make it, we'll be on the air at 12.50. Here's the pitch. Well outside. Two and one to Chris Fire. One away in the ninth as Parrish popped up to Stargell to start the inning. Got us on the board early in the first with an RBI single. Skiner hit a two-run homer in the fourth. That puts the Bucks on their way. Smash to third. Came up by Madlock. Fires. Throws. Got it. Ball is sharply to third. Came right up on Madlock, but he stayed right with it. Fired on the Stargell. And now Camargo will be the pinch hitter. Duffy Dyer. He 
He's a left-hand batter, facing Keaton with a runner at first and two away. Bends it around the knees, too tight, ball one. That's five in a row by Keaton. Jensen Colby has started to throw in the bullpen. Keaton stretching. Here's the 1-0. Bouncer Geiner, that's to do it. Throw to Sargil. Pirates win. Devastating Montreal in the last uh, two or three times these two teams have met. Pittsburgh is now 96 and 62. Montreal drops to 94 and 63, and is a game and a half behind the Pirates in the National League East. Pittsburgh's magic number is four. The Pirates, with uh, four games remaining, all of them at home, it'll be a um, single game against St. Louis on the 27th and a makeup, and then the uh, three games to finish the season against the Chicago Cubs. Montreal has five left, three of them at home against uh, Philadelphia and two away uh, at Atlanta, and that'll be a doubleheader on the 27th. Some other National League scores of note, Cincinnati 4-3 over San Diego. Atlanta beat Houston 9-4, so Cincinnati is now two and a half games in front of Houston in the National League's West Division. And another National League score, Philadelphia 11-5 over St. Louis. Tom Seaver winning a 16th, but Pete Rose went 0-5, so a 23-game hitting streak is down the drain for Pete Rose. In an afternoon game, New York 8, Chicago 3. This broadcast was authorized under rights granted by Pittsburgh and Montreal and was intended solely for the entertainment of the AFRTS listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Pirates and the Expos is prohibited. Final score again, Pittsburgh 10, Montreal 1. Now this is Ken Allen speaking for engineers Ernie Gamble and Ralph Bartlett. This has been a presentation of AFRTS Sports in Washington. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service.